Neely Green, we saw there in Ethna's film that the five-day-old embryo implants in the womb and it's the size of a mm. poppy seed. Mm. It doesn't have a heartbeat, a brain. I suppose any of the features we associate with being human. Many people would ask how that cluster of cells could possibly be seen as a human being with a constitutional right to life. Well, I think what's very evident from the VTR, and it was just beautiful to see that, to see the baby kicking and moving, see the little hands and feet, the little face, the nose, the eyes and ears. I think for everybody's very familiar with that now. You know, nowadays, if you, when you get pregnant, it's shared on Facebook and everyone's looking at your scan, your nine or 10 or 12 week old baby. I think it's very evident to everyone that the unborn baby is a human being. And, and I would, let me give that, I'm asking about the five day old embryo. Uh -huh. We will jump, we will get to the 12 weeks. Sure. But at that early stage, we heard it's well, the size of a poppy. Seemed. Yeah, well again, I suppose that's the question then, when does life begin? And you know, really science and medicine are united on this, they're unanimous. If you look at Langman's embryology, something that every medical student studies, they all come to the, or any of the medical textbooks, they all come to the same conclusion that life begins at conception. Actually Peter Boylan, who's campaigning for a yes in this referendum, said on the Late Late Show that life began at conception. So just as your VTR pointed out really, life is a continuum after that. You know, the unborn child at five days, at 15 days, at 12 weeks, at six months, at okay, nine months, is the same person. Morning. But we're talking here about, I suppose, when it becomes a human mm. being when, it, mm. when it's a fetus when it becomes a human being do you make no distinction between a five-day embryo and a 24 week old well he, fetus? here's why i don't because when do we become a human being like you were once an embryo miriam so was claire so was i we were all once a fetus in the womb we were all once it just means little one and we were all that little person struggling to come into the world fighting for our right to life and we were all protected by the eighth amendment and i think that it, that is something that is at the heart of, the, of this debate we are only debating the right to life of unborn children because they are too tiny and defenseless to, to speak for themselves one more question and i think that i so, think but you are equating I suppose the rights of the five day old embryo with the rights of a mother. Well, if you just let me finish the point, what I am saying is that we were all once that embryo and we were all deserving of protection. And without that perfect protection, what we are saying is that the strong can punish and can kill the weak and defenseless. And I don't think that's a good reflection of what our society should be. But should that five day embryo have equal rights, for instance, to the right to life of a mother? But I don't think their right to life comes into conflict. And that's a key point in this referendum. You know, abortion campaigners kind of pit women against unborn children. But in reality, that's not the case. Our laws should protect both of them and it can protect both of them. Claire Daly, first of all, um, react to that point there. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's a hard one to react. I mean, I think th this issue really is, look, at, uh, unborn life obviously has a value. Nobody is saying that it doesn't have a value. But the issue at stake here is, is that value equivalent to the life of a fully born woman who maybe has other children, who has other uh, problems going on in her life and who decides what your video didn't show is that that embryonic life is attached to a woman and that the woman's life and all of her objectives and desires, if you like, are intrinsically tied up with that unborn life. So when we're sorry, Neve, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't interrupt you. Yeah. So when we're saying the balance has been wrong by the Eighth Amendment because I suppose what, what we call prenatal life has a value, but it's not the same. Okay, but Karen, let me ask them. you a few questions. I did ask Neve a few mm. questions, mm. just to be fair. So we saw on Ethna's film there at 12 weeks with the scans. Mm. They're extraordinary these days. It does have arms and legs. It's like a tiny human being. It does have a heartbeat. If it has the essential features of a human being, Surely it is a human being. But I think she explained very, very clearly that it doesn't have the uh, senses of, of a fully fledged human. It can't survive without its mother. It cannot but newborn survive babies without... can't survive without their mothers well, either. Well, we need to look after them. Uh, yeah, they are viable, independent lives. So the issue is, is somewhat abstracted, if you like, because it cannot be separated from the woman who is carrying it. And what's but your that, alter... But... If I can finish the point. So if we look at an embryo or a fetus separate to the woman who's carrying it. And we recognise in many very real instances where a woman faces catastrophic difficulties with her health, with her life, maybe with her finances. She could be in an abusive relationship and she feels she cannot continue with that pregnancy. If you're saying that her rights are equal, you in a yeah. equal to a fetus that's incapable of surviving without her, what do you do for her? Do you say that she's forced to continue with that pregnancy? Okay, just before I bring it even, when then, Claire Daly, is the precise, precise moment you believe 
the fetus becomes a human being with the right to life of its own. Well, I suppose international human rights law would recognise that upon birth, the law kicks in on birth, but it's not so up, up to, to me. Weeks. No, but let's, look, it's not up to me to decide. There is it no is. agreement. You're a there is it no is agreement in society or I, amongst I think, the people no, I, I out there. Is. Please let no, me finish. I, I, the point. I told us going to come in the, now. So the can I, can I just say, let, let Neve come yeah. back yeah. in. Oh, can I just say, I think it is extraordinary to hear anybody, let alone a legislator, say that the baby does not have a right until they are born. I think that is deeply shocking for most Irish people who are listening to that. And I think most Irish people would also be deeply shocked if they realised that in this bill, in this bill that Simon Harris has put forward, Head 4 allows for abortion right up to viability, allows the baby to be killed right up to viability. It's I think that is an deeply accurate, and profound, an profoundly accurate. shocking. Let's and let, let, let me, let me say this. It is wrong to try to pit women against their babies. What the law should do is to protect both of them. And I, I, I think it's very strange, Claire, that as a socialist you are coming in here to defend Fina Gale's bill, which says to women that if they're in, in an economic crisis, we won't help you. We won't give you the okay, support Niamh, you I'm need. Going to let Claire back you in, but I want you're That's not a good Niamh, solution. Niamh, you're talking there about balancing rights. Mm. So let's say we take the 12-week-old fetus and we've all seen scans of our own babies, mm. arms and legs, very emotional. But you do have to balance rights here. So how do you balance that right with the right of a 14-year-old girl who's mm. raped, mm. who's distraught at mm. being raped, Niamh, yes, and wants to terminate? How do you balance that right with the right of the 12 week old fetus? Absolutely. And they, they are difficult cases. And I, I know people who have been in, the, in those very difficult cases. And I know one person in particular who was brought by the state for an abortion when she was 13 and who now says that, that abortion caused her more yeah, damage than the race. But say it's a 14 year old but, who but you, wants you, you to terminate. You asked me to discuss the case, Miriam, so yeah. I'm doing mm -hmm. that. But let me say this this bill is not about that. This bill but is I'm about this bill, that question. But this bill is about legalising abortion for any reason at all. Why, until the twelfth week of that baby's life, and then it's about legalising abortion on very broad grounds until the six it. months, until the six month of pregnancy. But the, okay, the point there, is, is that there are many different reasons, and each of those reasons is unique to the position of the woman who finds herself in that situation. And many of us, and many women out there, it's a normal part of pregnancy that people miscarry in early pregnancy, mm -hmm. and what they discharge from that miscarriage is really like a heavy period. It doesn't Claire, look so anything insulting. like a human being. It can't react like a human being. Much of its instincts are reflexes. I, I actually, it doesn't have a heart. Let me finish the point. No, and to equate really that, insulting to women equate out there that who okay, with you fully born point, women who have the law that is it's being calling. proposed protects okay, and recognises the yeah. interests of fetal life can I just by, okay, by recognising that as the fetus develops, can I just say, as the fetus Claire, let let develops, it's Can I just say that, Claire, you've shown extraordinary insensitivity to women who suffer miscarriages, many of whom are extremely traumatised and upset about the loss of their baby, not their fetus, but their baby. And I think we need to understand that mothers and babies can and should be protected. And what this bill I'm seeks to do is to legalise the killing of unborn children for any reason at all up to 12 weeks, up to six months then on very broad grounds. We can do it's, better than that I want as to a agree with you. So maybe that will help you. I think, I think mm. in this day and age, abortion is a barbaric and medieval mm. answer okay. to the crisis Let's that women face. We should there. do better than that and vote no on May You're Claire. absolutely right that many women who experience miscarriage mm suffer it as the equivalent of a bereavement. Maybe somebody late uh, has, gets pregnant late in life and that was their last chance to have a baby. And they are utterly bere bereaved by that. Yes, but the yes. point that you've touched on, which you miss in this whole campaign, is that that value is linked to its mother's aspirations and the woman's aspirations in this no, situation. And the people no. making the decisions about their own okay, body Claire, are the women themselves. And the only way green. in which Let we can well, I think it's very, I think it's very evident, Claire, Claire, I think it's very evident that you just don't have any regard for the right to life of the child at all. And I believe that we can protect both mother and baby, that we should do our very best for both, both mother and baby. I think abortion is a cop-out. It's a symptom that we have failed women. And I think that this, what this government is doing is telling Irish women, you know what, if you've got a crisis in pregnancy, you are on your own. Instead of helping you, we simply offer you an abortion. But, I don't think that's good okay. enough. But you're protecting nobody. Every day oh, yeah. women are faced with crisis pregnancies and every day Irish women are deciding to terminate their fewer pregnancies, and fewer as are many of them deciding year. to fewer keep their babies. Repealing year. the Eighth Amendment won't Neither change that. It's the only Claire way Daddy, in which going. those who... Thank who, you both who, very much. I'm well, going to leave it there tonight. It's the only way you can respect Claire all Daly. opinions, Thanks very to much, be honest. Maria. Nevi Vrian, thank you both very much for coming in tonight.